Okay, Shalom Aleichem. We're learning the Hele Gatanya. We spoke about how God's light, when we say light, it's all a code. We're not talking about physical light. <coughs> We're talking about energy. God's light, God's influence, the soiv of kol almin, is beyond. And then we said there's a light that God has which comes into the world. Mamalakol almin. And then we learned the piece in the Zohar which said that God's light grasps everything, influences everything. And then we said that nothing in the world grasps or influences God's light. So we broke that into four parts. We said that nothing influences God's light, i.e. not the beyondness, that light which is beyond all the worlds, not even the greatest, greatest, most exalted, sublime beings can influence or grasp, meaning even the highest and the highest of angels, and they don't understand the essence of God. And down here we said, which you might have thought, that once the light is a constricted light, it's a light that comes into the worlds, you might have thought, well, maybe God would be affected by this world that it's in. Like the way, and the analogy that we left off was the way that a soul is affected by the body. If the body gets hot or cold or in pain. And we ended yesterday by saying, that the Gemara says that in the way that the soul fills the body, God fills the world. But then we said that the analogy is not exact because when a soul fills the body, this, the soul is grasped by the body. It's in the body and it's affected by things that are happening. And then we mentioned yesterday a plug on taking care of your body, making sure the mamish get involved in superfoods and exercise and all the good zachen, limit your EMF exposure, and all the other things, blue light, whatever else would be necessary, hishtadlis, of feeling good, going to no box, we'll talk about that another time, the boutique spa in Bergenfield. A person has to be aware of the well-being of his body, because it will affect the soul. But God, who's the soul of the world, is not affected by the world. And we ended yesterday. When it's winter outside, think God's like, ooh, it's like cold. Put, a, put on a scarf. It's cold out. It's winter time outside. If God is the soul coursing through this world, Mamalakalaman, you would have thought that maybe he could be influenced by this world. Or it's hot outside. Or in the Sahara Desert, God is like, shh. Wish there was some mazgan over here, some AC would be helpful. So the answer is no. God is not affected in mamalakol almond in this world. He's not, the world isn't toifis, isn't, doesn't grab on and affect God. Okay, that's what we're up to, which is very, very important. So we said, Hashem is not affected by any of the changes in this world. God down here remains unaffected, certainly up. In the Soiv Kolamen, and when I say up and down, I don't mean anything physical. When I, I mean conceptually higher. Mikayitz lechayrif, if you go from summer to winter, mi yoyim lalayla. Kedich siv gam chayshik lo yachshik mi mekra. That even darkness does not darken you. When it gets dark outside, God doesn't feel like, ooh, it got dark. I'm feeling a bit like, or when it's the winter, like, what do they call it? The winter blues? Seasonal depression. Seasonal depression doesn't need any, you know, those sad lights, <laughs> seasonal affective disorder lights. Yeah. God's not affected, but we are. But we are. V'layla k'yoyim yoyim. L'fi she'enu nitpas klal toicha o'ilamas. As God's ore is coming into this world, He's not 
at all affected by the world. Very important. Afal gav the mamal alloy. Even though he fills it. Which is interesting. You would have thought, if God is coming into the world, certainly he should seemingly be affected by it, not affected at all. Oh, okay, so there we spoke about God being not affected or shifted or changed in the world of Soiv Kalaman, and God not being shifted, affected, changed by his light that's in the world. Vizeo gam kein inyan Soiv Kalaman, perish derch mashal, kisha odam misboinen beeze davar chachma besichloi. Okay, now we're going to go into another element. This is the idea that God surrounding the world, i.e., now we're going to speak, we're explaining piece by piece this, this section from the Zoyar, which was written by Rai Mehemna and Moshe Rabbeinu. Now we're going to speak about how God affects the worlds, both the upper light, which maybe you would have thought, well, that light is so aloof, it's so beyond, maybe that doesn't really affect the world. It's like beyond. And then we're going to speak how God's light in the world affects the worlds. So we said God's light is not affected by the worlds, the upper. He's not affected by even down here as the light comes into this world. And, but God's light, Sayyidu Kalaman, affects the worlds and his light down here affects the worlds and influences. So look at the mashal he gives. Very straightforward analogy. When you think about something, give me an object that you could think about. The book. Basketball. Okay, basketball. Okay, Shkoya. I'm going with the Kayan. Book. A book about basketball. So, your mind is thinking about basketball. Your mind is in this thought about basketball. Your mind, <coughs> is, is your mind shayach? Is your mind able to have a relationship with basketball? Is it able to grab onto the concept of basketball? Yeah, because it can think about it. But is your mind much greater than basketball? Your mind is much larger than basketball. I, mean, I hope some guys, you never know. It's like, all I think about all day. Ball is life. Ball is life. So, but even a guy who says ball is life generally will admit that like, you know, I could think about other stuff. So the mind is bigger than the concept called basketball. Is the mind shy to it? Yeah, it could think about it. it. It interfaces with it, but it's also larger than basketball. It's bigger than basketball. So this is an analogy from our perspective to understand. In the same way that I have something that's bigger than an idea, it's larger, it can interface with something down here, even though it's bigger than it. It has a relationship to something down here, even though it's bigger than it. So too Hashem's or, which is soiv kolamen, the beyondness of Hashem, is bigger, but at the same time could come and interface with it, but doesn't become affected and influences but never loses the beyondness of it. You hear that? He's thinking about either a physical thing or even a concept. To think about the concept of trigonometry. You're not even thinking about a physical thing. You're just thinking about the concept. The rules of chess. The idea, even there, you're, you're, it's seemingly that's something even less physical, it's even a higher concept, but even that, you're still above that thing. As I sikhloi v'machshavtoi makifen ala davarahu, your mind is larger, hamitsuri v'machshavtoi, that you're imagining in your mind's eye, oi b'sikhloi, ach ein makifen ala davarahu mamish b'poil mamish. Okay, this is interesting. When you think about basketball, or a book, or a shtender, so I can think about this shtender, my mind wraps itself around the concept of shtender, I can picture it, I could, I could think about even the concepts of shtender, the abstractness of a shtender, which means 
it's that which is supporting a book, it's that which is supporting something. You know, a shtender means something. It means that which allows learning to take place. Maybe it allows a certain posture to exist while you learn. Whatever concept of shtender you can think about, and your mind remains bigger than it. But does your mind completely engulf a shtender? No, because the shtender is still sitting in front of me. So it's a good analogy from our perspective that your mind is bigger than the object that it's thinking about. But when it comes to Hashem, okay, this is the, the good stuff. When it comes to Hashem, Hashem is not only that Hashem is bigger than the world, but the world is outside of Hashem. When Hashem is f- surrounding the world, he, we're actually inside of Hashem. It would be, we can't do this, but it would be as if I'm so powerfully thinking about the shtender that the shtender stops existing outside of me is now inside of me. Which we can't do because we're not Hashem. But we're the shtender, you get it? And Hashem actually can engulf us inside. That's what we mean that even though Hashem is beyond, He could still grasp and influence the lower worlds. Okay, this is all just explaining the Zoya. Avala Kodesh Bochu, but Hashem is different. The way that I think is not the way that you think. When you think about a shtender, you can engulf the concept of shtender and remain bigger than it. But it's still sitting outside of you. But me, when I am engulfing you and thinking about you, I'm larger than you and you're actually inside of me. We're literally inside of God. That's hardcore monotheism. Mamish. That's the Jewish message. Hardcore unity consciousness. This that Hashem knows all of creation. Makefis kol nivra v'nivra. God knowing all creation is that He's literally surrounding. We're engulfed inside of God's consciousness. Shehihi chiyusai, this havasai, that God, this is now taking it to the next step. The energy called soivikol almin is the thought energy that we're going to see is going to begin the generation of creation. So this that God is thinking of creation, He's larger than creation, He's thinking about creation, (coughs) allows now the beginnings of creation to start to exist, being completely, literally engulfed by God, much more than me thinking about the shtender, I engulf the idea, but the shtender remains outside of me. God literally were inside of God, and it's that soiviv kol almin light, energy, that's the beginning of the process of the life-giving force to creation. But it's going to take it one step further. That's the first step in the creation of creation, is the thought of creation. But we're going to see the next step of creation is the speech of creation. That speech is when God's light actually comes into the world. Here we're talking about God's light being that which surrounds, conceptually, creation. It's thinking about it. It remains larger than it. But what we're talking about here, this is part of the symptom not being kipshutai, is that God's light actually now is going to come into the creation. It's going to come into physical creation. That's called mamalakalaman. This is the creation of vessels, and now he's about to... Pour light to that. Pour light into the vessels, and we're going to see provide well provide specific, not even we'll see that this is a different uh, different uh, model. Provide uh, articulated creation is going to start with general or general creation, and then give specific formulation to creation. Okay specific formulation to the creation and we're going to see that the interface of how that's going to happen is through the Hebrew letters.
There's going to be an interface of soivikol almond coming into mamalikol almond. Okay? So we're still in soiviv, hi 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 yu soiviv, savu soiviv, me ayin liyesh bepoil mamish. U memalikol almond. And then when that light starts coming now into the creation, hi bechines achiz ha mislabeshes toich etzema nivra. He gives a very good example. Let's talk about the creation of the sun. When God's light is coming into this world, when we talk about God's light coming into this world, we're talking about creating specific things with limitation. The powerful thing is that even in the limitation of the creation, God's light is there. That's big. So what we're talking about now is that the first phase is called Soiv Kol Almen. There's a lot of complex things here, but we're just making it you know, simplified. The first phases, and like we said, this is all code anyways. The first phases of soivikol almin is the thought, which is the general thought of creation, which is allowing the formulation. But that thought is too powerful for too much detail to take effect. It's too powerful for shtenders like this to exist. It's only when the thought comes into speech and there's articulation. Like imagine trying to have a relationship with somebody where they, they said, you want to get to know me? And they just like put you somehow, you know, Elon's working on this. They, you just like put them in your brain. Like, whoa, like that's a, like, it's like he's like, get to know me. And they like deposit you in, in their brain. And there's a lot going on there. So all the more so God's brain, God's thoughts. Okay? But if you want to get to know somebody and you actually have a, a discussion with them, there's, there's a real crystallization of detail, of thought coming into, into more concrete form. If I want to have a relationship with you and it's just like we just plug our brains together, that's like very lofty level of communication. It's too lofty for basic, coarser, parts of creation to occur. That's how we would communicate if we were pure souls and no body. So Hashem wanted there to be lower levels of creation, even physical creation. And we're going to see that the phase that that's going to go through is the phase of thought into speech. Which means you need both. If there was no speech from God, then creation would be very, very lofty. It would be very, very high level stuff. And if there was, i.e., if there was only soiva kolamen, the only elements of creation would be just very high levels of creation. The fact that there's mamala kolamen and there's now speech is allowing for much more delineated, finite levels of creation to occur. If there was only mamala kolamen, could that even happen? No, because you can't have speech without a previous thought. And even though people say, like, you know, sounds like nowadays people do that, you know, speaking without thinking. No, what they're speaking is about with whatever amount of thought or lack of they're putting in, but there's some amount of thought going in. And the speech is a result of the thought that was there. The speech is coming as a product of whatever thought is available. And therefore, that's the analogy. In the reality, the mamalakul alman, the amount of... of in de, of delineated creation is the result that Hashem was thinking about it in Soiv Kol Almen. Again, there's nothing physical here. This is all analogy. So tomorrow we're going to have, or I guess next week, we're going to have to go more into the, de, into the detail. Right now we're holding with how Hashem is influencing the world through, through Mamala Kol Almen. We said Soiv Kol Almen is influencing it by the fact that you could think about an object and grab onto it, even though you remain above it. 
But now we're going to see the way that Hashem comes into the world and influences the world while being in it. We should be Zoycha Mamish to know Hashem's Torah, to connect our souls to the infinite wisdom of Hashem, and be Zoycha Mishir Tzidkenu Bimhera Viyameinu Amen Ve Amen. Amen. Shabbos. Thank you, bro. But it's still Mutter to learn Torah. Good to know.